Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, provides smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of the perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the quality and construction that he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Signature Line, Azan, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran uses a seed to humidor approach as all of their tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Premium Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 254 of Stoye Geeks. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. I have Joe D in studio. This is episode 254, volume 2. And this is the Stoye Geek segment. And we had a guest pop in today live in studio, Jared from Christoph Cigars. Also How are Rhode you? Island Zone. I am very well, thank you. How are you? Joe? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing That's very. Good. I'm doing very well. Try, trying to hold on to the ship and maintain, and it's not easy to drive while we're doing some of the boot black brand. But I am trying my dondest. If you're just tuning in to this episode, uh, in the first volume, we had introduced Paul Kabiski of Boot Black Brand. Check him out online, bootblackbrand.com. Cocktails, sodas, and syrups. And we had went back to the old fashioned. Mixture, which was what, Paul? Uh, Sons of Liberty Battle Cry whiskey, mm. ginger cardamom lime syrup, and a little Angostura. All ro- well, Sons of Liberty and you are Rhode Island-based businesses uh, out That's there. Right. It's a uh, common theme we got going on today, Joe. Yeah. Out there doing it up. Uh, you can check Paul out at bootblackbrand.com. And now, Jared from Christoph. Jared. <laughs> How is everything going in the world of Kristoff? Things are going great. Thank they are? You. Yes, yes, yes. How are things with you? Things with me are even better than that. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Glenn just visited Rhode Island. He was, yeah. You know, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen the ads and, and, and done that there. How was that event? Good? They were good. I really, I wasn't at them. Okay. I How did that work out, right? <laughs> when, when, when your boss flies into town, yeah. right? And, and you weren't there, I guess. I went, I went and saw him for... Maybe about 15 minutes at the event that was uh, down this. It was another event in Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. And um, I went and saw him for about 15 minutes. And then I had, like, dinner plans. So I left. Okay. And that's <laughs> Hopefully you missed a little bit of soup saw, on this. Uh, well, so, yeah, <laughs> I saw him for, like, 15 minutes. And then I walked in. I gave him a hug. I'm like, oh, Glenn. He's like, oh, brother, how are you? And I'm like, oh, good. Uh, all right. <laughs> so he came to Rhode Island, and you had no meetings with him. No, no. I, uh, that's I guess that's a sign of no. John John Fozzi, who's our sales rep in New England, mm-hmm. um, Vegas. it's his show, Johnny Vegas, mm-hmm. and uh, it's his show, and uh, you know they're his events and stuff like that. And the last thing you need, I communicate enough with my with my uh, with my sales staff. None of them want to hear from me any more than they already do. So I was like Johnny. It's your show. I trust you. You handle it. John had uh, three or four events with Glenn mm-hmm. uh, towards the end of last week. So Awesome. And so they all went excellent. You know, if it brings me up to a topic. I want to take the time out, if, if, if we could, and, you know, let's talk about— Is this about paper towels again? No, no, no. <laughs> we're not talking about paper towels. I Jared really wants to talk to. about paper <coughs> towels. I, I don't. You told yeah, me uh, If you email Joe H. at com, I will give you Jared's email. You can talk to him about paper towels. Actually, it's Jared at com, right? Why are you doing that? Two points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's right, Jared at talk, If you want to talk about cigars, you can email me. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. <laughs> if you, if you want to talk about paper towels, you can definitely uh, yeah, speak, Jared speak at Jared at com if you have any paper towel-related <laughs> concerns. <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk wheelhouse. about let's talk about the transition that that you went through. You you the, you know in in what? Correct me if I'm wrong. In about two and a half years, right? You're joking there somewhere. Well, no, there is no joke. Yeah, There's no go. joke. There's no, you know, you 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 started off as the New England rep for Kristoff. Correct. Right. And then we the last time you were on the show we had spoken about your promotion with with Kristoff. Sure. Which now you're vice president of operations for Kristoff Cigars. Of sales. Of sales. I'm sorry. Vice President of Sales for Christoph. If I was in operations, there would be no Christoph. It's <laughs> my, my my guy Ward Ward Hall is like the VP of operations. He's uh, he's like my partner in crime, and it's he's the interesting thing is Ward could do my job, mm-hmm. I couldn't do his job. Sure. I mean, I'm like highly expendable in that situation. <laughs> sure. he, but he handles all the operations. Sure, but makes you know, the company great. A lot of us natively here. When I say native, I mean the, the Rhode Island cigar shop crew know 
how Jared got into Kristoff. Yes. And how Jared received your first opportunity to become the New England rep for Kristoff. It's an inspiring story. Yeah, it, 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 you know, uh, to be honest Inspire. with you, it, 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 it's one of those stories <clears throat> that I look at and, you know, it, it's almost like not to turn this into like a holistic show at all, but it's like, you know, you kind of ask the universe of what of, 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 of where you think you want to be. And, you know, it really spoken to you, you know. Yeah. So so realistically speaking, you know, for the Stogie Geeks listener who's outside of Rhode Island and they say, you know, why do we always have Bellity and why do we always have Jared on? Always so frequency because, you know, it, it, it's very rare in the cigar industry, let's face it, that we have access to someone within the company at your level, right, here in little old Rhode Island. You know, it's rare that usually these guys are actually in state right, with right, time off. Where, right, you know? right. You, usually, let's just call a spade a spade, let it out there, you know, most of the companies are in Texas, Atlanta, Florida, right, you know, where, 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 where we have access to to people within a cigar company who are at your level. So realistically speaking, for, to have close guys like Mike, Mike Bellity, to have someone close to you, native Rhode Islander, come there and, and, and then tell your story, it's just super convenient. You know what I mean? If our podcast was, was down in Miami somewhere, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd, d- d- this discussion would probably be kind of mute. You know what I'm saying? Because you know a lot of them are down there, sure. you know? You know, because every time we interview someone here on the Stogie Geek show, uh, it's usually what? Joe, Texas, Absolutely. Miami, yep. maybe Vegas sometimes. Uh, West back Coast. Back to little state of ours, right? We're right, right. right. So, you know, it, so you started off as the New England rep, mm-hmm. and then you had advanced within the company in a, in a short amount of time. So let's take the opportunity to kind of talk about, like, the, like the keys, of, keys of the industry, what you've done differently. What would you have done differently if you were to do it all over again with with Christoph? You know, is there, le, le, like what are some of the lessons that you have learned throughout the past? What it's been three years? Has it been three probably years? more than that? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Five, yeah. I I was a uh, so I am absolutely not qualified to give anybody the keys to the industry. I mean, you look at some of these guys who have been in the cigar business for. 10, 20, 30 years. Like the guy that runs our factory, Rolando Villamil, has been in the cigar business for like, I think, literally 50 years. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's like these guys forget more every day than I've learned in sure. four or five years as a sales rep on the road. Um, but that being said, I mean, it, the the real thing for me as a sales rep, and which was challenging for me, but especially now that I try to teach my sales reps, is uh, I have two rules, you know, for being successful as a sales rep or or in any sort of sales function. And it, one is show up, mm-hmm. and the other one is don't be a dick. And if you can successfully achieve showing up and not being a dick, you beat 90% of your competition. Yeah. The other 10% is <laughs> the <laughs> the other 10% is being the kind of person your customer wants to do business with, right? Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about in the previous segment when I was talking to Paul. Um, it, the sales rep is the product a lot of the times. And I say a lot of times, like especially when giving questions like this, I am the only person in the company that doesn't make the company any money anymore. You know, the sales mm-hmm. reps generate revenue. I'm their assets. I'm a liability. My only job is supporting them and giving them the resources they need and the reporting and the analysis that they need to succeed. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, to put it in perspective, a lot of that stuff comes from operations, you know, the reporting and stuff like that. Really, I'm there to travel with them, to work with them, to help workshop with them opportunities in their selling style, opportunities um, when interacting with customers and just really following up and making sure that they have the resources they need to succeed. Mm-hmm. So we've been blessed, uh, you know, this year we're on track for another double digit growth year. Uh, previous couple of years was the same way. We're really, really blessed to have a good sales team that really um, supports their customers, cares about their customers. Cause um, you know, the only thing uh, my dad always taught me this, you, the only thing you can't teach is give a shit, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and we're fortunate to have a sales team that gives a shit, mm-hmm. you know, so they make they I, ma- I make eight I have eight sales reps and I only have to make one good decision one time mm-hmm. and that's hiring and then once you do that your job gets really easy so yes. like I said I told you in the beginning I don't have anything to talk about if you had one of my sales reps on it would be much more interesting <laughs> but <laughs> I really have no new information for you Ozempa. <laughs> sorry I showed up for the free drinks <laughs> uh, the, yeah. Jared, Jared caught wind um, that we were having. Uh, Paul from Boot Black ran, and then Jared showed up with uh, some yes. bag of peanuts and said, can you serve <laughs> me a drink? And 
And, and, yeah, and they and, gave me a headphone thing. And we gave you a headphone and said, great, you're coming. <laughs> yeah, no, it all worked out pretty swimming. Try to buckle my, my Christoph uh, Sumatra <laughs> Lancer. <laughs> yeah, you know Joe D. He's always got a theme. We had a hockey guy on. You know, Joe D's got the theme. He's, he's all good. He's, mm-hmm. he, he does his, he does his thing. How is that Christoph, Joe? It's always phenomenal. Did little, you leave the case out, or you, you didn't get a bit of age? Yet. I'm gonna revisit later. Yeah, I had to put it down in favor of Christoph, though. Yeah, I, I, Sumatra Lancero all day. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, I Joe. love that. I love that cigar. And you know, Glenn, that's Glenn's favorite blend. Glenn Case, the owner of Christoph, in case anybody doesn't know him, um, <laughs> he uh, he most stuff takes. You know, it can take you know 30, 40 samples or right. more. It could take a year. Some companies you hear, oh, it took me years to blend this cigar. It's like, oh shit. Should have probably stayed longer, you know, in the Dominican Republic. But it's like, but but Glenn went down there and he smoked like three samples, got to that, and he was like, he blended that in like an afternoon. He's like, I don't even care if we don't sell one of them. Uh, I'll smoke every single one that we manufacture, you know, and mm. it just, that blend became a super big success for us. Either way, it's a win. I, I've, I've found today a little stockpile of Christoph now, the last couple of years, and uh, getting into him, revisiting uh, some of the smokes a couple of years after the fact, and aging very, very well. Yeah. I've been digging those 685 wind logs. Mm. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I've yeah. been, I've been. Um, those are hard to find. I, I know. And, 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 and Joe at the end. I guess you, know, I can get you guys some. know a guy. Yeah, I know, know a guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, you know, you can get them on cigarshed.com if you're uh, available. <laughs> <laughs> available on five packs. Yes, I'm gonna you know, s- starting to get sh- nauseous. Ship, ship directly to your, <laughs> ship directly to your door. You know, I'm just saying. What don't you, you know? guys sell? Do you, you guys know? sell paper towels? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, we, we have some paper towels. <laughs> we have some. I, I actually wait. I got some. I got a roll here. Oh, okay. Buck a sheet. 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 You want to email you a square? Or you Please. Just sweat? Yeah. There you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, what were your keys to success? Because there, there were two of them. Give a shit factor. You got no, factor. one of them was show, show up, up, and one of them was give a shit. D- no, the other one was don't be a dick. Yeah, don't be a dick. Okay, the second one. Do you know how many cigar reps do not follow the second? One, I'm not naming names. I'm not naming names. But there are so many. There's, I, I cannot believe what, what, what drives me nuts as. Because you used to work at a shop. I used to. Well, first of all, resume. You owned a shop. Resume. I owned a shop in the Providence Metro. Yeah. Then I worked at a shop. I have keys to two shops, but don't work at any of them. and don't know how to use the point <laughs> of purchase of them, which is weird. Yeah, that's right? weird. <laughs> it is very weird, right? <laughs> but you do know. they know you have those keys? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they do. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my no, they, that's <laughs> <not> <laughs> they, they, You know, and you know, and and and, and which nothing drives me more nuts as a cigar enthusiast. I love the culture. I love the lifestyle. I love the camaraderie that we have with our forty chain cigar shops here in Rhode Island, which is hmm. a little bit too much. You know, I think the magic number should be twenty eight. You know, when you take a, a population metro. Hmm. 1.2 million in the province metro, and you have 40-ish defined yeah. of, of, of cigar shops, you know, 38 active, and there's rumor that there's seven more coming, right? And you have all these the, these people who jump in. Now, from your perspective, you know, you, you would look at it as, okay, great, it's another door that we can, an, another prospect, because it's not like you're banging on door to door selling the product, obviously, right. you know? So you, you look at that. And then from my perspective, I look at that as is, is the, the, the market is just flooded. Market saturation. Well, to right. some extent, to some extent, yes. I want everybody to open and everybody to be successful, right? Yes, yes. But statistically, cigars are 10% of 1% of all tobacco sold in the United States. Right. Premium handled cigars, right? Yep. Yep. So by that logic, 10% of 1%, so uh, basically a basis point, yep. is the amount of people. So in Rhode Island, what's that? You know, ten percent. You're, you're you're talking you're a, a little bit less like of uh, one hundred twenty thousand yeah. people. Yep. You yeah. know, yep. or something like that. So it's like if there's one point two million people. So it's like if there's one hundred twenty thousand people. IPCPR says that there should be one cigar shop per every. I think it's either two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand people. Mm-hmm. I'm sure somebody will correct me. So by that logic, there should be five cigar shops in the right. state of Rhode Island. Mm. That being said. All of them, all of these customers are, all of these uh, cigar shops are open, and all of them are doing pretty well, yes. you know? Yes, Like, and, and I want, I'm like, shit, open a thousand. I don't care. <laughs> but it does create some challenges from my perspective because if I've been doing business with Joe Hosempa Cigar Shop for, you know, 10 years, mm-hmm. and then somebody opens across the street, and now Paul Cigar Shop says, hey, Jared, I want to carry Kristoff because I know Joe's across the street does really well. Joe's going to tell me, well, if you think you can do more business with him than you've done with me over the course of 10 years, then open him. Fine. Instant butthurt status. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So it does create some issues. That being said, I want everybody 
the more the better for the industry that's the same thing with other manufacturers people always ask like you know like oh what do you think of this guy what do you think of that guy god bless mm. i want everybody to be successful because rising tide baby yeah. like i want everybody to be successful i really do you bring up two points right let's let, let's peel back that right because two points is is okay you know you want you want everyone to be successful but let me ask you this question because who better qualified than someone who has seen the united states you know we i i think it's fair to say yep. joe d and Joe H tend to focus business wise. Whenever we interview someone on Story Geeks, from my perspective, it's always the marketing branding aspect. Where are they going? Quality of business, quality of product, etc. Okay. Joe D chimes in. Okay. Paul brings a different dynamic when when he's here. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Are you facing that from a Christoph perspective anywhere outside of the Providence Metro? So for everywhere. Oh, really? Okay. It's dynamic. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, okay. So, so you know, you have drama like whatever. I had an account recently where there was drama between a sales rep and mm-hmm. drama between. De- it's it's like, and that's one account. You know, you mm-hmm. got to think of it. I probably have. I don't know. There's over probably fifteen hundred that mm-hmm. we sell to. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like you need. To, it, it's all perspective, you know. Everybody's little sphere is the most important sphere. But when you look at it from absolutely. the mac- yep. from the macro perspective, we deal with this dynamic absolutely everywhere. And sometimes there just isn't the right answer. At the end of the day, we're in the business of selling cigars. That's what our job is. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't get paid in handshakes and hugs and and you know Christmas cards. We get paid in dollars and bills, right? So when I'm facing one of these situations where one of my sales rep calls me and goes, "Hey, you know, you know." Paul at, you know, Dumpy Cigar Shop is is uh, bitching because I opened up, you know, the 12,000 square foot cigar shop across the street. And it's like, well, you know, Paul did one hundred and seventy five dollars in business with us last year, Mm. you know, and Dumpy's opening order was, uh, you know, 100 times. that. Right. Right. So it's like I I think we're going to open up the guy across the street. You know, there's a lot of hard business decisions that you have to make around relationships and around other things. and, And a lot of times it's hard to have that perspective. At the end of the day, it's a business that's nobody's in it. Glenn always says the fastest way to be a millionaire in the cigar business is to start as a multimillionaire, <laughs> because it's true. <laughs> because it's true, you know. Yep. It's and and <clears throat> now we amplify that on a product that doesn't sell as well as Christoph or not as well known. Oh my and, gosh! Uh, now you know exponential. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So it's you. You've got to. You've got to have the perspective where it's like, look, we've got to sell cigars. That's what our job is, and mm. and it's really hard to separate the business is fueled. Nobody's in the cigar business because they saw a giant financial opportunity and decided to jump at it. Mm. Everybody is in the cigar business. If you talk to anybody, well, not anybody, I can't, I don't want to generalize, but like if you talk to a lot of these guys, they had a, a career beforehand and they just fell in love with the product. They yes. fell in love with right. the business yep. and that's why they're in it. And that's exactly the story with Glenn, you know? Um, so this is a business fueled by passion and stuff like that, but you can't, pay your cable bill in cash in, right. you know like right. it, it sometimes it trickles down you know right. but mm-hmm. at the end of the day you have to have guys like 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 i was saying like ward my operations guy or or even or even my position now that that kind of manage the farm and make sure that you know the cows are getting milked and everything while the the owner glenn can be passionate and go out there and sell his dream and sell his vision mm-hmm. you know well, so it's a tough dynamic to balance yeah really for is. sure but you're but you're seeing this in other Metro areas, for sure. Everywhere. So everywhere. there are new cigar shops that are just sprouting up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a that's actually interesting. A, a inter- interesting dynamic because you know th- th- there's there's fact when you talk about consumer numbers, premium cigars. When I mean premium, I mean anything over eight dollars a stick. Right. Right. So anything over eight dollars a stick, you know, it could be seven fifty if there's a special or whatever. But you know, usually anything over eight dollars a stick, hand rolled. From a factory. And sometimes price doesn't dictate. Right, right. You I'm, know what I'm I mean? Just, like I'm there are some cigars, like I've got, like right here, like I have an Illusion that I pulled, that I stole. I don't want. Pirate stole flag's Paul, been raised. Pirate, that I, I stole like from Paul. This and part, and like the Illusion Rothschild's $5 and something cents. That's premium hand rolled, and that's as premium as anything. You know what I mean? Right. We've right. got, we've got uh, our Cristania line, which sells at, you know, five, $5.80, $6, $7 whatever and that's premium long filler well rated cigars you know so price is tough to it's tough to measure premiumness 
Sure. You I'm, know? Sure. I was going more premium, you know, luxury tobacco, you know, cigars as opposed to something that you would pick up in a, in, in right. like a gas station. Right. You're not in a two-way gas the, You know, you go and you get your Kino and you got your bag of Doritos and your half a tank of gas and, <laughs> and, and, and you're buying a cigar. Yeah, you're totally right. You know what I mean? Now, even though some of them might, through channels, sell what classifies as a premium cigar, but, you know. Within that market, you only have like two percent of the American population who actually smokes premium cigars. Sure. And when 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 you cascade those numbers down, like you said, in in a Providence metro, or any me- you know one one point two million, there there should be five, mm-hmm. if you do the, the 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 math. But now, you know, you have all of these. It, it, it's actually uplifting that um, that. You're seeing this outside of Rhode Island because when I look at it from a Rhode Island perspective, I'm like, why would these people get into the cigar industry at this point? There's already <laughs> thirty something right. people. What are they seeing that? There's we're already not thirty seeing. something people. There are some cigars shops in our metro that are established for holding X brand, et cetera, et cetera. There's some that are better hangouts than others. There's some that do a little bit better marketing than others. They go to the different lounges for the atmosphere. I get that you know, different people, but, you know, you have your smaller shops, and then you have your shops that have that, that have developed, okay, well, now we're going to start getting a liquor license and, and sell spirits, as opposed to maybe do a underground uh, BYOB-type atmosphere and stuff like that. So I I assumed, and thank you for the refresher, that, you know, that, that it was like a, a, a Rhode Island thing. But it's actually encouraging now, from a Stogie Geeks perspective, it's actually encouraging that from a business perspective, it's everywhere, according to Jared, who's all over the United States. We'll get back to a previous point. It, you know, it's not, uh, it's not just the big boys. It, you know, that that passion and love for cigars, people want to get into it. You know, have the the hobby shop kind of boys club mm. status. There, there's always going to be a, a you know variety of shops, and uh, you know you have certainly consumer has those options. Want to go for the you know the premium uh, lounges with all encompassing you know mm. every, everything under the sun or it's kind of, you know, boys club or whatever, and uh, kick back and have your sticks, and, and and that's it, and that's that's good too. Maybe sustainability wise might not be the best, cause you know, uh, for you know, as far as the dollars and cents, but everyone's situation is different. So yeah, mm. it depends on what your goals are, right? Mm. right. If I'm right. like, if I retired tomorrow, you know, I would uh, where what would I do? You know, <laughs> like I would want to hang out in a cigar shop. And if I've got a little bit of money and I want to figure it out, then I buy myself a cigar shop. And you know what? If I pay my rent every month and get to smoke for free, that might be worth it to me. Right. Sure. You know what I mean? Yep. So it depends on what your goal are. And uh, you look at a state like Rhode Island, you're like, well, shit, there's like 30, 40 cigar shops. How are these guys all making money? Maybe they don't care. Right. You know, maybe they make enough money to pay their rent and That's have it. all their friends hang yeah. out and hang out with them. And th- and they get to smoke for free. Maybe mm. they like it. You know what I mean? Bill. Who cares? But Rhode hey, Island, right. in yeah. defense of Rhode Island, from a business perspective, it, 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 it it's pretty tax friendly when it comes to premium tobacco. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where, where we we have a fi- if you know this, Paul, we have a fifty mm-hmm. cents cap tax per stick, okay. regardless of price. And it's same way in Connecticut. If you take a bordering state like, like Massachusetts, it's forty percent of the revenue of the stick. <sighs> Is tax, but yeah. but that's and not it's even high. Uh, yeah, it's oh, oh yeah, it's, it's all you don't get a, ch- a month to sell oh, it. Yeah, you pay it as soon as it's yep. invoiced. As soon yeah. as it comes in, as soon as it's invoiced, you so actually. So you have pay. to be passionate. You have to have money. Oh God, yeah, yeah. This Jesus is not stuff. again. This is yeah. not a business yeah. that you can just trip into. Yeah. You know, which it's makes deliberate. the numbers crazy. Oh yeah. When oh, you're yeah. you're saying one thing, but you're you're contradicting with the number of companies that are cigar shops. Right. Right. Which, and, which so goes back to what what's a comfortable life, right? Uh, right. Or, or what's what makes you happy? Right. What makes you, you know? happy? That mm-hmm. certain mm-hmm. influx of uh, shops in one area versus another. You know, you got to factor right. all that in. Yeah. Right. And yeah. if that customer wants to pay a thousand dollars a month in rent at a minimum sure. to sit there and smoke cigars by himself and right. watch, you know, and watch, you know, Lifetime. And he can go cover the, MLB cover the bill. Go for it. <laughs> right, right, right. Go for it. Who cares? Yeah. It's not my prerogative to right. tell you how to do business. It's my prerogative right. to sell you brown weeds in Just, the tube. Right. And and that's and that's right. what. And as that's long what as you're we buying, right. we're happy. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. You have a question for Jared while he's here, Joe? I know you do. 
And they do. You always have a question. Uh, Joe, we 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 are we we thinking of doing like a Kristoff thing. Whenever Joe uses the word Kristoff in an episode, like you know, call a ten or something like that, or email ten wins a five pack or something like that. We we have to do that. Joe's like, oh, she Kristoff. Right? Guy. We yeah. cannot have an episode without you mentioning Kristoff. <laughs> yeah. And now Jared's here, and you're speechless. Uh, honestly, I'm lost at the moment. I'm lost to my cigar. I have a question. Oh, but how would that be? Go for it. Business perspective. Sure. I want to break into a new market. Yeah. What's the best avenue for? Because we're kind of in the same industry, not. Yeah. Um, what do you feel is the best way to penetrate a new market? So the way that I the way that I tend to look at it, and and unfortunately, I don't have the privilege of perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Because I came into the company after Glenn worked his balls off for you know ten right. years or nine years or whatever. But I, I knew – Glenn and I, the owner and I, have been friends for maybe okay. seven, eight years, and we kept in touch, blah, blah, blah. And like I was telling you before, I had a, I had a real job before where I was an executive for Target or, and, uh, and for Bed Bath & Beyond. And right. so I don't have that privilege of, of grinding and penetrating. But I have, for example, um, I, I do know now what's important, sort of, or mm-hmm. I think I know. Right. And really for me, it's one – it's it's a few things. It's you got to have horses, Right. You've got to have guys that run for you. You've got, and when you're ta- and when you're trying to penetrate a new market, sometimes, sometimes the guy who's going to spend the most money isn't the guy that's going to do the most for you. Sometimes mm-hmm. the guy that gives a shit the most about your product is going to be the best cheerleader for you. So it's not just identifying the guys who are going to spend the most money with you wh- when you're penetrating a market. Right. After right. Right. you're established in a market, right. um, finding out who's going to spend the money is how you make your business. Right. A B C accounts, right. shit like that. But when you're looking at a market, you want to have conversations with these people. And you want to get to know them, right? Right. Because the key for your customers, we don't. I ne- you very, very, very rarely on social media or otherwise will you see me calling saying I went to Texas this week and visited some customers. Because mm-hmm. I think that trivializes mm-hmm. what those customers do for our business. Right. It's strategic partners or retail partners and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because I want my customers to be as vested in my business as I am. Sure. Right. You know, so it's it's when you go into a market and you're penetrating a new market, you want to find not just the guys that are going to spend the dollars. It's sometimes you're stepping over pennies to pick up or you're stepping over dimes to pick up pennies. Right. You're yep. stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. You know, right. it's silly. You want to find the guys that are going to advocate for you, that are going to give a shit, right. that you're going to have that relationship over the extended period of time. So I think the most important thing is and the customers want to tell you what's wrong or they want to tell you <laughs> how to be successful. <laughs> customers can't Honestly, wait. <laughs> Customers can't wait. God, yes. <laughs> and the, bo- all of us are in sales here, so we're laughing. But it's like the customers can't wait to tell you how you're screwing up or how right. other right. people right. you're competing against are screwing up. They will tell you. They are your best, best, best resource. Mm-hmm. Boots on the ground in every shop. And then, pen- and then in terms of penetration, again, one of the other things that I talk to my sales reps a lot about is how to be, how to be a, uh, how to add value in account. Mm-hmm. Right. Whether it's from in my business, for example, every time I'm traveling with a sales rep and hopefully every time my sales reps are traveling, they walk into the humidor. They make sure all the cigars are faced, all the labels are facing up. They clean up the section. They make sure shelf talkers are up and they're not bent. And if it's mm-hmm. bent, they go back to their car and get Put another one. Up. And you want to leave and have that customer say, oh, well, shit. When Paul comes into my liquor store, he makes sure his, ca- his facings are right. zoned. He makes sure everything is pretty. He makes sure they're priced correctly. When, you know, Tom walks in, he just comes in and says, ah, you need anything? All right. right. All right. Bye. Walk I got a sandwich out. getting cold in the car. You know, <laughs> right. that's right. it's, right. it's oh, yeah. being it's showing yeah. up. It's not being a dick. And it's making sure that the guys that work for you in your market feel like you're working harder than right. they are right. back to, to drum up point, business. Give a shit right. back. Then. Give a shit. Right. And it's hard but to find. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's but it. in terms yeah. of expanding to a new market, I think it's finding yeah. guys not necessarily that are going to spend the most, but the guys that are going to advocate for advocate, you. Yeah. Yeah. Be having cheerleaders, yeah, yeah, yeah. the boots I on the agree. ground, yeah, the boots on the ground to really yeah. to, turning to your really customers yeah. into yeah. salespeople yeah. is like the way to. And the it's way easy, to make it. easier to do local. Oh yeah, the minute you step out, yeah, you're preaching the game. choir. Dude. Yeah, it's like I travel around the country and I walk <laughs> into you know cigar shops in you know uh, whatever you know uh, right. West Virginia. And I walk in with my accent, and they're like, oh, you're not from around here, are you, boy? And I'm you like, oh, from fuck. The pot how am I gonna, <laughs> I'm like, how am I going to sell this guy anything? Right. You know what I mean? Right. But then you sit down for two seconds. So it's like, oh, you know, you hunt, I hunt. You right. know, you shoot, I shoot. Whatever. Find you find common ground. That's right. Right. But, yep. you, but right. you show up, and you make them understand that you right. care about their business. Right. And you don't talk about, you know, like, 
I need this number. I need, you know, I need 40 boxes to make my number. So even though this isn't good for your business, it's good for my. That's not a partnership. Right. It's right. showing them right. that you give a shit and mm-hmm. being an expert. Cigars, so. liquor, it's the ultimate yeah. conversation starter, and it's all about right. people, man. That's, yeah. And they want to do business. They want to do business. Right. I'm selling cigars, right? If I show up and I'm not a dickhead, customers want. You know what? I'm, I'm going to find a reason to say yes to this guy because right. he's not an asshole. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've seen eight other assholes today. Right. Easily yeah. relatable. You know? Yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, it's kind of funny because when, when other reps walk into a, sh- uh, a, nope. a shop, I just kind of observe, and, and it's amazing how some of them really have an agenda. Yeah. You know, is, is uh, you unbelievable. Know, no, no, yeah. is is it's, the I, is the in spite of my relentless incompetence. No, it's it's like it's like you know, is the only here? No, okay, I'll be back. It's like really, like you're not gonna <laughs> sit down, like you're not gonna sit down, like sit down with the customers. And I know yeah. with the FDA rules and all of that, you can't pass out samples anymore. And I and I get that. You can only pass out samples to 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 the actual uh, cigar employees there. And I get that. But you don't want to sit down and say, hey, man, what are you smoking? Hey, man. Now, I've noticed that you've done that. I could go through a whole list of people in the province metro who do. But I can also go through a whole list of people in the province metro who don't. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and they never ask, like, what are you smoking? Or they only speak to the owner. And then they, they, they do their business. Say they write five, six, <coughs> ten boxes or whatever. And they leave. And then now the customers who are always going to tell the owner what they did wrong. They're like, Who's that guy? Oh, that's so-and-so from the cigar company. I have actually seen customers say, I'll never buy that cigar because he mm. never introduced himself. Absolutely. Like, like, they it happens never, all the time. Like Jack, that, no, please do. That is what propelled me to get into the business. I saw. That's why what, this is a long table instead of a round <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I saw what uh, what didn't work, what I didn't want to do, and uh, I, saw, I personally saw this guy uh, mm. absolutely crushing it mm-hmm. and put it in that, that quality TLC, day in, day out, workhorse factor, and... Uh, I said, you know, that is the model that I wanted to, uh, you know, model myself after, you know. Yeah. There's, you know, because it's certainly both ends of the spectrum. And uh, it's unfortunate, you know, unfortunate for the customers that uh, they get that other side, you know. Yeah. But, but, but more often than not, they get that other side. But you know something? From my perspective, I'm going to visit a cigar shop if I'm still around here on this planet. I'll be there six, six months from now, right? Or, or a year from now. And my point is six months from now, that rep is gone. Like, how many of them have a quicker turnover? Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, oh, that guy's not going to cut it. The guy's just like, you know, the guy walks in and, 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 like, totally dismisses people. And I get it. Maybe you're on the road. People like you, you might say, okay, to your sales reps, you know, you have eight places to stop today in that region or whatever. I get it. There is a time crunch, and sometimes you're going to spend longer than others. But some of those shops need the 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 the, the uh, TLC for sure you sure. know because yeah. and and then the more that they educate this is where I think the gap is too and please please correct me if I'm wrong out, out outside of the province metro where what I'm starting to see now in the cigar shop realm is that now if the owner had grown to now the owner is not 24 seven on location the workers are not even caring about pushing the product. You know what I mean? So it's like, they're like, oh, well, what's new? Nothing. Like, really? Like, you, <laughs> your cigar has 500 faces, get something new every other week. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and your Facebook tells me something's new. And I'm here because you got something new. Show yeah. me what's new. You yeah. know what I mean? Because someone like me, being a co-host of Story Geeks, like Joe D, we have to review sticks. We want to try to get into the new. A little you know, enthusiasm goes a long way. You know, and, and, you know? and it's amazing how it's just it's just like, yeah, well, you know, whatever. Or they don't even know. that. That's one thing that bothers me, too, is that they're hiring more of, say, a cocktail waiter or, or, or waitress, and they're not hiring, I don't want to say a tobacconist, but they're not hiring someone who remotely even cares about the product. Sure. You know what I mean? And it's hard. Yeah. How do you, right. how do you if I own, you know, like Havana, for example, mm-hmm. right? And I'm going to pay somebody to effectively ring people out right. for selling, for buying cigars. But I am going to pay them as a, as a, you can call them a humidor manager, you can call them a tobacconist, you can call them whatever you want. But how do you pay somebody what they're worth, right? right. If I'm a cigar guy and, I, and I'm working a humidor and I am bringing people out and helping people in the humidor, I'm not. I'm worth so, if I know about cigars, mm-hmm. I'm worth so much more right. than you know, ten, twelve dollars an hour to a customer. That being said, what are you effectively doing? Well, you're ringing people out. 
You right, know, right. you know, you're helping them find the right cigar. You're providing customer service. You're totally dictating their experience. But at the end of the day, what are you physically doing to a business owner? You're helping. You're ringing them out for, right. for buying cigars. I feel like you some know? of that onus is on the uh, the rep for <clears throat> uh, propelling that education process. The oh education my gosh. process, mm. absolutely. You know, I, you're I'm, so right. I'm the sticks, the business, um, taking that taking that time. You know, you got to do doing the right things. It's not about when, you know carrying that briefcase in and, and big time in the. Uh, you know, the staff and, uh, and you know, customers and everything else. You, know, you really got to get in there and mix it up. You do. And, like, Joe, how many reps, when you were working at the at Churchill's or whatever, mm -hmm. how many reps would walk in and be like, oh, is Brian here? No. Oh, okay. All right, man. Well, verbal I'll see you. <laughs> verbal step on. How many yes. times does that happen? <laughs> it's like when I walk in and I – and there have been – oh, yeah. and, 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 and when I'm traveling with sales reps – We'll walk into a shop and we'll see the owner and they'll walk right up to the owner and give him a hug. This is Jared, blah, blah, blah. We sit down. We start to smoke and I'll be like, oh, excuse me for a second. I'll get up. Oh, hey, man, I'm Jared, the guy behind the counter. I'm Jared. I'm from Christoph. How are you? Right. Would you like something to smoke? What do you like? Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. And I only got to do that a couple times before the sales reps kind of understand like, oh, shit. Well, we should probably be taking care of Because at the end of the day, the owner's only there. Some some owners are there every day. Yeah. And they're the principal. But, but if the business grows, which is the goal of a business. You've of, got three or four business. people that work there. They're right. the ones yeah. that are selling the product. The keeper yeah. of the and humidor. Yeah. if you're the only guy that goes in there and talks to them and gives them a couple anecdotes or a couple product stories or whatever, they're going to feel like an expert. They can't wait to sell your cigar because they're going to be like, oh, did you know that the 685 Woodlawn was named after the owner of Glenn Case's childhood address? No, I didn't. And now the customer's like, shit, this guy knows what he's talking about. And they pick up that cigar. If you, you have to give, again, and this goes back to what I was talking about, being an asset to the customers, really being an asset and not a liability. If you just take money out of their store right. and don't help them turn those cigars into profit, we always say tobacco is always mm -hmm. worth money. Cigars, only when you turn it into cigars does it stop being worth a shit. It's mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's unless you have your sales reps out there being assets to your customers. Mm -hmm. It just the the cigars are a liability to the customer. Awesome, you know. Yeah. So that's awesome. the key. Thank you for your refresher. Oh please, thank and good you. luck with everything, Christoph. Are you sticking around for one more segment? Twenty more minutes? Is Stogies that what I? Week? Yeah, sure. So you signed up for? Yeah, whatever. Oh, sure. <laughs> no, I'll be, I, I no I'm know. here. I got nothing to do, Joe. I need, yes. I need to know. We'll, we'll, yes, we're I'm here. We're gonna pour another cocktail, and we're, and we're gonna go. Are, are you sticking around? You got twenty more minutes? Sure. All right, you got twenty more minutes. I know Joe D sticking around. Joe, I'm do you have a Christoph in rotation? No, for the Stogies of the week. For everybody. No, no. For, in, for the stogies of the week, the volume no, three. No, not this up. week. No. Not this week. No. Oh, a little pro oh, we didn't we didn't pry a proper proper plan. But you know, I will review a Christoph next week. Thank there you. you go. In honor of you being here this week. I appreciate you. It'll man. probably be the six eighty five Woodlawn because I'm gonna go smoke some more. I've been on those. Like I, I can't get that in the TA uh, there's no chance of me getting a TA. Where can I get a TAA? You guys at the next place? Closest uh, to me? Oh, well, the newest? Yeah. The TAA, yeah. I gotta get yeah, it. I get it. You don't have any on you? I negative. Of course not, right? <laughs> anyway, when we come back, we are going to do volume three of the Caring about your customer. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Full but circle. We, there you go. Give it to him. <laughs> when, when, when we come back, we are going to do Stogies of the Week. Stay here. <laughs> 